This shutdown Labrador gave me the saddest shake I've ever had. I got to hug a golden retriever, even catch up with our mama, boxer Greta, and more. Let's go sit with some dogs. If you spend any time at a shelter, you're bound to run into dogs that are shut down. And whether it be from abuse, neglect, or just fear from being in this new unknown place, you're gonna see it. Now look at this dog. What do you see? I have to tell you, he stopped me in my tracks. Outside of his big brown sad eyes, I didn't realize why at first. But then it hit me. You don't ever see chocolate Labrador retrievers this shut down. Let's go in and sit down with him. I guess the best way I can describe my feeling while I'm in there is it's kind of like when you meet up with that friend that is just always positive, always happy, and something's wrong. They're really sad, they're really down. And it, it kind of shakes your confidence because they're always supposed to be happy. And if they're not happy, maybe something's really wrong. I think we always have so much to learn from dogs. And in this situation, I think that it's simply, we all go through hard times. Even when life's supposed to be perfect or when the things are supposed to be certain way, Labradors are always supposed to be happy. It doesn't always work out that way. And my goal in sitting with him is not to get him in my lap or, or get a big transformation or fix him. It's really just to be there with him. It's comforting sometimes just to have someone there with you, not to solve your problems, but just to go through them with you, to let him know it's going to be okay. Whatever he's been through, he's safe now. Now, I do think we can make some progress though. You see how he's facing the kennel door, almost like he thinks that's gonna open at any minute, and all he's thinking about is getting out of that gate. So I'm gonna turn my back to him and see if we can change the dynamic just a little bit, relieve some of the pressure just a little to get him to maybe open up. I think that's working a little bit. I wanna spend more time with him because I think we're making some progress. While I'm doing that though, I wanna show you something fun that I did with the Animal Friends of the Valley's staff and volunteers. We're gonna have some fun today and I'm gonna ask the staff who pours their whole heart into helping these dogs every day, if they could take home any dog, what dog would that be? Okay, I have a question for you. Okay. If you could take home any dog in the shelter right now, what dog would it be? It would be this little red one. Oh yeah, I saw her. She's so sweet and I just discovered she loves to play ball. Oh yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. really sweet. If you could adopt one dog right now, what dog would it be? One only? Only one. I would probably take Daisy and four. Okay, why Daisy? Because she rolls over for belly rubs immediately. Oh, okay, <laughs> awesome. If you could take home any dog that's here right now, what dog would it be? There is a gorgeous golden retriever that's here right now, and just the face is adorable and so sweet. What? Golden Retriever alert. Oh, I'm gonna go in there and sit with him. I have to because I, I kind of think if I was a dog, I would be a Golden Retriever. Eh, maybe a boxer. It'd be funny if Poof, I turned into a dog and I was a Chihuahua. <laughs> Look, immediately, he's willing to jump into my lap. Golden Retrievers, no doubt, are really amazing dogs. I mean, look at this guy. You know how you sit? He's a good dog. <laughs> really enjoyed spending a little time with him and just getting to cuddle with him. Like he's, he's such a cuddle muffin. I love it. It just doesn't get better. I will tell you this though, what happened next is a great reminder of how hard it is for dogs to be in the shelter. I don't care what kind of dog you are. Here's what happened. All of the other dogs in the kennel started barking. He got scared, he started trembling. You can't see it in the video, but I could feel the shift. And he immediately went in to start aggressively hugging me. And oh, it scratched my arm, it hurt me really bad. And I just, deep breath, we took a minute, we calmed down, asked him to sit. Sit. And once I got him calm, then I just calmly exited the kennel so that he could relax. But he's a good boy. He just needs out of here. The stress is getting to him. Only 10 minutes. I don't think they're coming. But he has a hole tomorrow too. It's always so sad when you see their collar in there. Like somebody loved him at some point. Or still do and doesn't know where he's at. He's really scared though. Like he scratched my arm because that, that fear of just all the dogs barking and being in such a scary place. 
fear manifests itself in different ways in these dogs. And what was re you know really cute golden retriever, and it seemed it started off really sweet, then he just started panicking and just aggressively hugging me. <laughs> Take care of your husband here before I before I don't make it. Before I might you faint. Guys, honestly, I might not make it at this point. <laughs> All right, let's get back out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go team. Are you kidding me though? A golden retriever in the shelter? And listen, I love all dogs and golden retrievers are also amazing. I think the big surprise to me is most people would say, I'm gonna buy a dog versus adopt a dog because there's a certain kind of dog that I want. But they're often at the shelter. Like, what do you want? Big dog, small dog, golden retriever, puggle, labradoodle, German shepherd, husky. They've got them all. Your shelter has them all. And yes, you might have to go to the shelter a few times. They might not be available the first time you go, but just go. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay, but fingers crossed on Teddy because they only have 10 minutes to get here. I'm really hoping they show up. Back with Charlie. Look at the progress we're making. He's not up against the back kennel wall. He's not trying to get out of the gate. This is good. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. You're a good boy. You a treat? Whatever you have been through, I am sorry. That seeming smile is stress. When he relaxes a little bit like that to breathe, that's good. He is relaxing a little bit, but it is not a smile by any means. He's taking treats from me, which is, I didn't know if we were gonna get to that point at first. He's only taking the big treats from me. Like, he's so nervous that if I give him a little piece of my treat that I broke off, he won't take it. He'll only take the big piece because it gives him another couple centimeters of safety. Watch, a little treat. Not interested. Big treat, watch. that just that extra little safety or he's just smart and he knows to hold out for the big treats <laughs> he's calm i'm calm it's comforting even though we're not cuddling just being together like this is really comforting like toys okay okay it's okay something new we're going to introduce we're going to check it out you like that yeah oh you do like toys good boy you got a toy oh Okay, okay, you will get him? I don't think I'm gonna get him in my lap by any means, but just this, him loosening up like this, a tail wagon, willing to investigate toys with me, this is huge progress. What's that? What's that? What's that? Wanna get it? He didn't know how to put it in his mouth. That's so fun. Oh, there you go, you got it. Good boy, good boy. See if you take from an open hand. Oh. Okay, yeah. Thank you. You know, you know a trick. Did you see that? Okay, you ready? Shake, shake, shake. Oh, that's the saddest shake I've ever seen in my life. Now I want to check with Mel and see if maybe she's willing to groom him because I think just that warm embrace of a bath would go a long way for him so that he just feels good about himself. All right, remember Teddy? We only have 10 minutes left. Well, now it's five and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting. We get down to three minutes, two minutes, one minute, and then this twist happens. Okay, you're not gonna believe this, but the front desk called the hold that is for tomorrow and they said, hey, the first hold didn't come, so you're up, make sure you come tomorrow. And they said, no, no, we'll come right now. So they're actually here in the lobby right now. Okay, the team is gonna go grab Teddy and I have more great news. Mel is able to squeeze in Charlie before the day is done. Now we have no way of knowing the last time Charlie was bathed, if ever. But I will say this is really great for him for the bath, but also because it gives him a moment away from his kennel to decompress. Besides, that ear definitely needs some cleaning and treatment. It could be uh, flies. I'm not positive. Usually the flies do attack the bottom part of the ear. Once the flies start a sore, then it just it gets worse. 
I try to leave the dogs alone when they're with Mel so I don't distract, but I had to stop in and see this boy. Hi, buddy. How's Hello. he doing? He's doing good. He's doing okay. Doing good? Yeah, I just sat on the floor with him for a while and yeah. brushed. There might have been some abuse going on because so. the minute I picked up my rake to just break him, yeah. he's like, You're so scared he's very it. jumpy. Uh, any little noise. Yeah, something's going on for sure. Definitely something's going on. And that's all fear based, I think. I think what if his owners come? Some and we'll have some, yeah, we'll have some education. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this because I think just oh, he needed to be done. So much better. But he also needed it. He's very dirty, and there's all this de-shedding. I yeah, get so out. many splotches. It's huh? gonna look really good when okay. it's done. All right, buddy, you're in good hands now. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> Next step, forever home. Yeah. Charlie's definitely gonna need time in his new home. I mean, you saw how he acted when I first came up to his kennel. He growled at me. He needs somewhere where he can feel safe and at peace, and I can't wait until he finds that and watch him leave the shelter with a new family. See you too, Wagon! Somebody's feeling good! I will say the fact that Charlie can sit there with Mel and deal with a loud, scary dryer is a testament to his willingness to start to trust again. This bath is absolutely the best thing for him right now, and I cannot thank Mel and Animal Friends of the Valleys enough for doing this for these animals. You can see what a difference it makes in Charlie. And look at how handsome he's looking now with that new bandana. I'm telling you, a bath can work magic for dogs with low confidence. Charlie, you're a very good boy. Wow, what a transformation. To see Charlie go from shut down to fresh and clean and running around with confidence and, and checking things out. It just makes me so happy. This is all within one day. I did not expect this. Just in case you needed proof that dogs are amazing and resilient, Charlie is that proof. Well, he knows you because he wants to go to you. Everybody else he wanted to growl about. But yeah. boy, he just panicked with those noises. He didn't know where they came from. Yeah, very skittish, huh? Yeah, I, I feel like he obviously was like put in a backyard or something where he hasn't experienced much. No, that behavior is so much harder to create in a lab. Yeah. Because it's just so bulletproof. In a lab, it's hard to get him that skittish. Yeah, that's a good point. Glenn brought up a really good point about Charlie. He's a Labrador, and to get a Labrador in this mental state is really hard. You really have to neglect or abuse a dog like this. It can happen fairly easy to some breeds, like German Shepherds that are highly prey-driven, and unfortunately, mentally, they can just be put into this position a little bit easier. But Labradors are just preconditioned to be happy, fun-loving dogs, and there's not a lot you can do to them to get them to shut down. So it has likely been years of neglect or abuse or whatever that might be to get this dog in that mental state. I'm glad Glenn pointed that out. He's a professional trainer, so he sees situations like this. And his assessment, unfortunately, I think is spot on. What dog would I take home? It would be Greta, absolutely. I reconnected with her. I can't believe no one has adopted her yet. She's still there. I love her so much. If you could take home any dog right now at the shelter, what dog would it be? Oh my goodness. Well, I really like Ella. Okay. She's out here. She's making great progress. So that's the one you'd take home? Yeah. If you could take home any dog, what dog would it be? I don't think she has, she has a name yet. Okay, why Why her? She's housebroken. She's pretty good at other dogs. Yeah? Yeah, no, she doesn't have a name yet. Oh, hi. Oh, okay, you can tell she's friendly, huh? After some careful consideration, we decided to name her Molly. If you could adopt any dog that's here right now, who would you adopt? I would adopt Wednesday, because she's the cutest thing. Cute little black terrier. She was a mess when she got here. She needed to be groomed really bad, but she looked like a little gremlin when she walked. It was super cute. And then after they groomed her, she was amazing looking, amazing. Her body is just one big mat. I spotted this girl while I was at the shelter as she was being brought in by animal control. I was blown away by how bad she looked. 
I couldn't wait to tell Mel about her to see what she could do. Get this, when they got her in the groom room, Cheryl and Mel just had to spend time finding her body parts. They couldn't even find her feet or ears. That's all matting. That's not even a foot, I don't mm -hmm. think, is it? No. No? Nope. Here's, there's here's her toes. Foot. <gasps> there's the ball pads. Mm -hmm. Now to give this girl back some dignity, the shelter gave her a name, Wednesday. I get it, looking at her is painful, but it's even more painful for her. That's why Mel immediately starts to shave down her mats. She has years of experience shaving mats, but this will present a challenge. I'm surface cutting this dog, taking the top surface off, which will sometimes allow me to save some hair. As she shaves carefully, she realizes something. All this was on her tail, and I thought she had a long tail. Wild. I had to ask her how long she thought this dog went without any hair care. I, I, I would think it would take like a year. This really does a number on the shaver, but look at the filth in that. You could tell she's young and her spirit hasn't been broken. That's great to hear, but I just worry that her spirit may not stay strong the entire groom. That was her foot. Okay, look at the size difference here. One leg completely shaved, the other leg still entirely cased in a shell. Whoa. With how much still has to come off, it's no wonder that Wednesday starts to get anxious. It's okay. It's okay. You're all right. Almost two hours go by and that's just her body. When they get to her face, she's just not having it. Thankfully, Mel is able to get to her face thanks to Cheryl's singing technique. That might seem a little funny at first, but some dogs actually calm down when you sing to them. But in this case, it's still just not enough to get to those sensitive parts like her eyes and her ears. So to play it safe, Mel decides to try to loosen some of those knots in the bath. Let's see how Wednesday reacts to the water. Hey, what do you think? You can see that this is all, this is all so new to this little dog. Mel does her best to try to ease her into this, even uses a lavender shampoo to try and calm her. But look at that, you can start to see Wednesday's cute little face as she uses tearless shampoo and loosens up some of those mats. Although she's still stressed out, this is something she's needed for so long. Okay, next step is important. She's got to get sprayed down. And here's why. Conditions the skin and it relaxes the hair. So if you have any more matting to take out, it helps relax it. With that and a little brushing, she can take care of more on her body. But with her face, Wednesday is still struggling a lot. And Mel decides she needs help from Vet Tech Mandy to sedate her. Chemical restraint is actually pretty important. Um, it relieves the stress for Mel here, <laughs> and it relieves the stress for the animal. Um, we don't like to manhandle animals, we don't like any of that, so to have this as kind of a plan B, it makes all the difference. This groom is really important for Wednesday. She just doesn't understand that the shelter is trying to help her. All the sedation does is help relax her. And this will make her feel better because now Mel can get around those sensitive areas, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, without her hurting herself. Just in case you're wondering why there are bald spots on her. That's where it was pulling. So that's how you can tell how, how the mats were all the way to her skin. The good thing is the hair will grow back. And this time, it will grow without causing her any pain. And Wednesday is looking amazing compared to how she came in. Look at that. Even when she was looking her worst, two families put a hold on her to adopt her. I have some great news. Wednesday was adopted by her first hold. She's off to her forever home. Okay, it's about to happen. The moment everyone's been waiting for, Teddy is getting adopted. Okay, come on out. Everyone, let's clap for Teddy. He's getting adopted. Right here. Right here, buddy. Thank you so much. Congrats, buddy. Congrats. You're going home. We're so happy you guys came today. You weren't scheduled to come until tomorrow. Right? But we could have waited. <laughs> so the fact that you guys ran up here today, I already love you guys so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. What? Oh, you found him? Yeah, I found him. Yeah. You were like running around or? He, we were going to take uh, take off and go for a walk and he was outside in front of our house and started like posting them so somebody would recognize him. Yeah. No, nobody responded so we brought him in. And... Yeah, we even walked him a little bit to see if somebody recognized him. Right, right. A golden retriever, you think someone would, yeah. you know. 
Hey, it was meant to be. Huh? Yeah. 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 Well, thank you for adopting. That's thank really you. neat that you guys did that. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> that makes me so happy that they found him and then they were willing to come up and adopt him. That's awesome. If you can please share this, we've got to get the word out about Charlie. He needs a loving home. He's going to need someone that can just show him love, let him decompress, and teach him how to be a dog. I'll keep all of you updated. Let's find this boy loving home. Can I just say thank you to everyone that's been ordering my treats? It makes me so happy because I pour so much love into making this jerky and making them strips so you can break them down into little pieces for training or you can give your dog the whole strip. If you want to order treats for your dog, just go to RockyKanaka.com. I will also link it down below. Order them right now. I guarantee it. Your dog will love them. If your dog doesn't like them, I'll take them back. And if you want updates on any of these dogs, just check out the video right here or I'll link it down below.